Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation with powers of 10. We have 1 plus 10 to the power x equals 100 to the power x. And we're going to be solving for x values, both real and non-real. Okay. In other words, we're going to find complex solutions. So to be able to solve this problem, I'm going to use substitution. Since 100 is 10 squared, we can raise both sides to the power x. And that gives us 10 to the power x to the second power because I can interchange those exponents. And from here, if we call this something, what about y? Then we get 1 plus y equals y squared. Because if this is y, then this will be y squared, right? Cool. So that gave us a quadratic equation. That's the nice thing about substitution. We had an exponential equation, which would be really hard to solve, maybe impossible without substitution. Because if you think about it, we're not necessarily looking for integer solutions, right? I mean, if you had a problem like this, then it will be a little easier because you can kind of tell, hey, from Pythagorean theorem, x equals 2 is going to be a solution, right? 3, 4, 5. But in, in the first case, we don't have that luxury. These are powers of 10, and the difference between them will never be 1, unless x is something else, right? Obviously, x is not an integer. We know that, but it's something else. Let's go ahead and find out. Great, so we have this quadratic equation, and let's put everything on the same side. y squared minus y minus 1 equals 0. This equation has real solutions. You know how I can tell right away? Look at the coefficient of y squared and look at the constant term. This is positive. This is negative. Uh oh. So look at the coefficient of y squared and the constant term, right? They're opposites. One is positive. The other one is negative. In these cases, you always have real solutions, right? Because the discriminant will be positive. So in this case, y is going to be negative b, 1 plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1 again, minus 4ac, that's going to be a plus 4, for the reason I already told you. And now, and now we can go ahead and divide by 2. And if you simplify this, you're going to get 1 plus minus the square root of 5 over 2. Yes, this equation has real solutions for y, but are all the x values real? That's what we want to find out, right? Okay. Let's see. How do we go from the y values to the x values? Well, we have to back substitute. But one thing I want you to notice before I get into another substitution business is that 1 plus root 5 over 2 is greater than 0, and 1 minus root 5 over 2 is less than 0. You know, that's going to bug me, right? So I kind of have to clean it up a little bit. Here we go. Okay. So why did I say that? You'll see in a little bit why this is important. So let's start with this. Since y is equal to 10 to the power x, right? So we got, first of all, we started, let's start with this value. This is equal to 10 to the power x. So where do we go from here? Well, we're just going to log both sides, right? And there's no better way, don't you think, like to use base 10, which is log, L-O-G. L-O-G, if you don't specify the base, at least in my book, it means base 10, right? Okay, so we're going to log both sides. And I normally I don't use parentheses, but some people are really picky about that. But again, it's understood, right? I mean, L-O-G, come on. And I use different colors. So bring the x to the front because that's a property. x times log 10 equals log 1 plus root 5 over 2. Now, what is log 10? Since this is log 10 with base 10, it's 1, so we don't really have to worry about it. That's why actually we log both sides with base 10, because it just disappears, right? So we end up with something like this, log 1 plus root 5 over 2. Is that a real value? Yes, because 1 plus root 5 over 2, as I said earlier, is positive. That's why I said it, okay? Make sense? You're following? Okay, great. So now, where do we go from here? We're going to look at the other value. So this is one of the solutions, and does that number look familiar to you? Do you smell the golden flavor somewhat? Okay, let's look at the second one. This is going to be more interesting. So 10 to the power x equals y. And we got 1 minus root 5 over 2 for 
uh, another y value. But wait a minute, 1 minus root 5 over 2 is negative, you just said that, right? And how can 10 to the power x equal a negative number? Is that possible at all? Not in the real world. But in the complex world, things are different. In the imaginary world, right? Okay, let's imagine that there are solutions to this. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to tweak it a little bit. I want to make this positive. So I'm going to go ahead and write it as root 5 minus 1 over 2, it's opposite, multiplied by negative 1. It's that easy, right? You just multiply by negative 1 and it becomes positive. Of course, I'm not saying the result is going to be positive. I'm just saying we have a positive piece, which is important. We're going to use it. That's very important, okay? Now, what about, what about the negative 1? I need to complexify it because we want to go from the real world into the complex or non-real world, okay? And here's how we can do it. If you consider the argon plane, negative 1 basically is placed right here. And the distance from 0 is going to be 1 unit, so its modulus is going to be 1, right? For negative 1 at least. But if you connect it to the origin, kind of like think of it as a vector, right? And think about the angle that it'll make. And that will be pi radians, which is called the argument, right? So this is the argument. And 1 is going to be the modulus or r. And as you know, we can write complex numbers as r times e to the i theta. But r is 1. Don't worry about it. Just write it as e to the power i theta. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace 1 with e to the power i theta. Theta in this case is pi radians, but we can make several rotations. This is the principal value, but to consider all possible solutions, I'm going to add 2 pi n, which is a multiple of 2 pi, or multiples of 2 pi when n is an integer. Make sense? So we were able to complexify this negative number. Now it's expressed as a polar form. And what is that number in the front, root 5 minus 1 over 2? I told you that it's important, right? This is the modulus. This is the absolute value. Make sense? Awesome. And so we can call this r, and we can basically call this theta. Cool. Now let's go ahead and see what we can do with this. Obviously, I'm going to have to log both sides, but I want to use base e, the natural log. So let's go ahead and Eulerify this or eify this expression. How do you eify 10 to the x? In other words, using the complex logarithm, we can write it as e to the power x ln 10. And this is equal to root 5 minus 1 over 2 times e to the power i times pi plus 2 pi. Some people don't like it when I explain the complex logarithm over and over, but I think it's good for repetition because not everybody watches every single video, right? But you should. Don't forget that, okay? You need to watch every single video. Anyways, uh, as much as you have time. So we have this expression nice. Uh, we have E on both sides. So we can go ahead and use the natural log. And that's going to give us, but we're going to get rid of the E's basically. And here we have a product. So it's going to be X ln 10 equals ln. Here we have a real logarithm, right? Plus, because log is going to turn multiplication into an, an addition. That's actually really cool because uh, we use logs in chemistry, right? Like pH and pOH and stuff like that. Also in other areas. Obviously, if you have a gigantic product and you have to differentiate it, imagine how hard that's going to be with the product rule. You're going to be like, oh man, that's going to be crazy, right? But you can just ln both sides and you're going to get a sum, differentiate each one, and then put it together. Or if you don't want to put it together, that's fine. Leave it like that, <laughs> you know, right? Hopefully your professor will be happy with that. Anyways. From here, we get i times pi. Oops, I thought I was going to write pi over something, but that's actually pi plus 2 pi n. I can take out a pi and write this as 2n plus 1. No big deal. You can do it. Now, I'm solving for x. So let's go ahead and divide everything by ln 10. ln root 5 minus 1 over 2 over ln 10 plus pi plus. Okay, I'm going to write it. It's kind of tempting. 2n plus 1 times pi divided by ln 10. That's going to be the imaginary part multiplied by i. So we were able to write x as a plus b i. Don't you love that? Because it's also the, wait a minute, is it the name of this channel? No, this is CyberMath. Come on, what are you talking about? But anyways, you get the idea. We have another uh, channel. I mean, I have another channel. It's called a plus b i. Okay. 
self-promotion. All right, cool. So that's the result, but uh, for n equals zero, you get a slightly simpler solution, which is gonna be the uh, principal value, I think, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Anyways, so we got two solutions, right? One of them is real, which is this one, and the other one is non-real, or should I say complex? But when I say complex, real solutions are also included, aren't they? All right, great. Let's see if I have anything else for you. Yes, so this is basically the real solution. Unfortunately, Wolfram Alpha uses log for natural log, which is ln, but what can you do about it, right? And here's the complex solutions. Do you like them? Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.